Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the original Battlefield game from 2002 titled Battlefield 1942, and see just how many things have improved after 16 years of technical advancements to the series. Now, obviously, we're going to see visual improvements across the board here, so today, we're also going to take a look at changes that have been made to things like gameplay and included features as well. But before we get into all that, let's first start by taking a look at a few weapon comparisons, starting with the classic 1911 handgun. The first thing you'll notice here is that the textures are miles ahead in BF5, with realistic shadowing only further enhancing the image. 1942's gun may not look nearly as impressive visually, but it's worth pointing out the impressive amount of detail DICE managed to cram into this model all the way back in 2002. You can see a lot of small details like lettering along the slide, in addition to a bit of bump mapping on the grip. But one of the most interesting differences comes from the firing animation itself. In BF 1942, you can clearly see the spent bullet casing being ejected with each shot. However, BF 5's 1911 fails to show this. However, the recoil and animation design for BF 5's weapons are vastly superior, with better muzzle flash effects and much smoother animations overall. Moving on, we have the STG 44. Again, BF 5's presentation is superior here, with better reflective properties, textures, and detail. But the geometry of the weapon itself is very closely aligned between the two games, impressive for a 16-year-old game. A few texture mods and enhancements to lighting and the model would look practically identical. However, the firing animation does have some serious issues in 1942. There appears to be a desync between the gun firing and the recoil, though this isn't apparent unless you slow the footage down. Also, the charging handle isn't visible in 1942, a strange but likely necessary exclusion. Again, the animations in BF5 are much better, with the SDG-44 drifting horizontally during extended fire, whereas the SDG-44 in 1942 just repeats the same animation very quickly. Now for the classic MG-42 buzzsaw. In the original Battlefield, the MG-42 was only available as a fixed gun emplacement, and could not be picked up and moved. The ammunition was unlimited, and the only limitation was the overheating mechanic. However, the MG-42 in Battlefield 5 is the final unlockable weapon for the support class, and can be fired both from a deployed bipod position or hip-fired. The weapon itself is substantially more detailed in BF5, with a visible bullet belt that reacts to player movement, a ventilated barrel shroud, and actual recoil, making the weapon much more difficult to control during sustained fire. Next, let's take a look at some of the vehicles. First, we have the infamous Tiger Tank. Again, much like the 1911, there's an impressive amount of detail put into the original game's design. The Tiger Tank is very nicely detailed, with ventilation, decals, and even some wear and tear. However, BF5's tank does feature much more detail overall, especially the dirt that builds up when traveling over dirt terrain. It's also worth noting the slow turret speed on the tanks in BF5, something that the franchise has never attempted before on the PC platform, forcing players with high DPI mice to slowly rotate the tank turret instead of spinning it around unrealistically. Another important change is the damage modeling for the vehicles. Tanks in 1942, and all vehicles for that matter, operated on a simple health bar, with increased damage showing plumes of smoke coming out of the engine, but nothing like the controls or vehicle handling being affected. BF5's vehicles, however, will react to specific damage, like a damaged tread limiting movement. There's also specific animations for entering and exiting vehicles, only further enhancing the experience. The airplanes have also seen some nice changes, making them significantly easier to fly than in 1942. The planes in 1942 had much more weight to them, making maneuvers like rolls and flips more difficult, as you need to sort of swing your plane around. Planes in BF5, however, seem to behave the same regardless of whether you're inverted or not, making it much simpler to control. Planes in BF5 also generally spawn in the air near the deployment, as opposed to 1942's planes, which are always on the ground inside of plane hangars, requiring a lengthy takeoff. Visually, the difference between these two versions of the same plane are night and day. BF5's cockpit view offers a ton of moving dials, decals, and a much clearer weapon sight, whereas the cockpit view in 1942 features a fraction of the detail. Moving on, let's look at some environmental textures. The textures in 1942 obviously can't hold a candle to what's available nowadays, but it's incredible to see how far the industry has come either way. Things like dirt have gone from looking like a low-resolution mess of dark lines to a legitimate dirt ground, with small rocks and stones mixed in. Grass now features thousands of 2D patches of vegetation that react to the player's movement, and sandbag walls have gone from being repeated images of sandbags placed onto simple wall objects into being actual stacks of 3D objects that can be built and blown apart. And the same is true with the lighting. Lighting in Battlefield 1942, even back in 2002, was not great. The sun in the sky didn't project any sort of lighting effects, and was instead a simple texture that blended in with a skybox. 
The game world had some very minor illumination, but there was no volumetric lighting or reflective surfaces to be seen. BF5's lighting is unsurprisingly much better, with global illumination, god rays, and lots of reflective surfaces that help to enhance the image. The game world of BF5 feels like there's actual light, as opposed to 1942's dull and dark environments. Next we have Shadows. This is actually one of the more impressive transformations. Shadowing back in the early 2000s was very difficult to accomplish without swallowing up a ton of graphical resources. Games were only just starting to feature more daytime scenes because of this, as rendering a few static shadows for smaller light sources during nighttime scenes was much less taxing. Battlefield 1942 features almost no shadows at all in its environment. Trees, buildings, and walls have very subtle shadows that are barely visible, and players cannot see their own shadow. Players can, however, see other character shadows, but they're pretty simple. Fast forward 16 years, and high-quality shadows have become an industry norm. BF5's environments are loaded with shadowing, and special shading like ambient occlusion to help provide a realistic image. All static and dynamic objects cast real-time shadows, and players can now look at the ground and see their own shadow being projected, in addition to their character model itself. There's still a little bit of shimmering along the outlines of shadows in new games, and as technology improves, this will likely be improved along with it, but it's still an incredible leap forward nonetheless. Now, let's take a look at a few special effects. While Battlefield games nowadays are loaded with special effects like enhanced smoke, particles, fire, and destruction, the original Battlefield offered very little aside from some basic explosions and some simple water surfaces. Every explosion in 1942 featured this big white circle with a little bit of dirt and transparent smoke. These explosions did not affect the environment in any way, outside of damaging players or vehicles. Explosions in Battlefield, and by extension destruction in Battlefield, have become mainstays in the series ever since Bad Company introduced environmental destruction. Sandbags can be destroyed, trees toppled over, and buildings reduced to rubble, adding not only a cool looking effect, but a fundamental shift in the gameplay direction. Water effects have also seen some great improvements, with dynamic surfaces and actual reflective properties. So visually, BF5 absolutely looks better in just about every possible way. But despite these improved visuals, the real question is whether BF5 delivers a better World War II shooter experience. When Battlefield 1942 released, it released with an insane amount of content. The initial release featured 16 multiplayer levels, spanning the entire world including 4 maps in the Pacific, 5 maps on the Western Front, 4 maps on the Eastern Front, and 4 maps in Africa. Major battles included the Omaha Beach landing on D-Day, Stalingrad, Iwo Jima, and Operation Battleaxe. Battlefield V, however, currently only offers 8 levels at launch, most of which take place in Africa or Western Europe near the beginning of the war. DICE plans on adding more to the game with free live content, likely adding in things like the Eastern Front and the Pacific. But it seems as though that's based on how well Battlefield V performs financially, as they haven't officially confirmed what their future plans are. While the number of maps seems disappointing, the actual designs of these levels is vastly superior to the simple designs of 1942's maps. The environments are highly detailed and offer a great variety in terms of combat, with no character class or vehicle feeling too dominant. In 1942, it was common to have snipers dominate the large, empty landscapes, and going anywhere without a vehicle was essentially pointless. Still, I hope we see maps like Omaha Beach or the iconic Wake Island make a return. Next, let's look at the available game modes. Battlefield 1942 featured five modes, with three of those basically being variations of the standard conquest mode. Battlefield V, however, features seven modes, with more planned to release post-launch, like the Battle Royale mode Firestorm. Both games feature single-player campaigns, however, Battlefield 1942's single-player campaign was just a collection of multiplayer maps in a playlist with friendly and enemy bots. It was nice having a little bit of background as to what happened during each of these battles during the loading screen, but the experience was no different from the instant action mode. BF5, however, offers multiple mini-stories with unique environments, full cutscenes, and characters. While not the most impressive single-player experience, it definitely stands apart from its multiplayer and is a nice bonus to the overall package. Moving on, we have the classes. Battlefield has always been built around having different classes that can accomplish different goals. The original game had five classes, the Scout, the Assault, Medic, Engineer, and Anti-Tank. BF5, however, only has four classes, with some of the more redundant roles being combined, like Assault and Anti-Tank. The medics have seen some huge changes over the years, going from simply running behind teammates and healing them directly, to being able to revive down players with an animation, and being able to throw health instantly. The engineer class went from being a rifleman with access to some landmines and explosives, to being the support class with access to light machine guns, and the ability to fortify positions. 
Snipers are now equipped with spotting tools, and sniping itself requires much more skill thanks to bullet travel and bullet drop gameplay mechanics. And then there's the movement itself. Players in 1942 were capable of running forward, crouching, or going prone, but not much else. Battlefield 5, however, allows players to vault over objects, slide into a crouch, lay on their back, sprint to cover, aim down weapon sights, and even dive to the side to avoid gunfire. The improvements to the standard shooter controls over the course of 16 years is easily one of the most important changes that have been made, and make for a much more interesting experience. Finally, I have a few weapon and vehicle sound comparisons. The improvements to sound quality are undeniable here, but I thought it'd be interesting to hear how far the sound design has come either way. So what do you guys think? Do Battlefield 5's visuals and gameplay improvements make up for its lack of available maps? Or did you prefer Battlefield 1942? Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.